Yes, welcome back to Premier League Overtime. A very exciting time of year because it's finals time and we're already one week down and three to go. We're right in the midst of it right now. Of course, Sam Tugwell here at the end of the desk and alongside me as he is each and every week, the great man from the Forestville Eagles, the two-time champion once upon a time, yeah, Doug, Doug McDonald-Taylor. Welcome, mate. Thank you, Sam. Big show this week, mate. We've got uh, four big games to uh, review and uh, another four big games to preview. And uh, our guest is probably the name we've said more often than anyone else's name this week, Sam. So I'll let you introduce him. Of course, uh, alongside us today, we've got a guest on once upon a time. Uh, we've got a guest back, I guess. We haven't had one for a while, so it's nice to have one on. Uh, and he is, like you said, uh, one of the stars of the competition. Probably a Woolacott medalist, possibly. Uh, he's in contention for that at the moment. And he's doing some amazing things. Of course, the star forward from the Woodville Warriors right now, Nelson Kirksey. Uh, welcome to the show, mate. Oh, thank you. Thanks for having me. You've uh, had a fantastic journey. We're going to get about and talk about all of those uh, sorts of stories that you've got for us uh, very shortly. But, uh, Doug, of course, the finals are underway. There's a lot going on. We'll get started with the women's first because uh, the qualifier on Saturday night at Southern uh, saw the Tigers and the West Adelaide Bearcats uh, go head to head. And this was a game that not too many people wanted to miss because it was probably going to be the best game of the round. And uh, look, the journey for the Bearcats continues because they got up in uh, a 12 point win. They sunk the second place side um, in their own gym as well, which I guess uh, not so many people saw coming. But they've had a magnificent run. They're in some, probably their peak form right now, the Bearcats. Um, and they roll on through to a, a game where now a, a guaranteed prelim or grand final is up for grabs. Yeah, Westies keep rolling, Sam. This is a great story, and uh, this is a fantastic win. Going up, hostile crowd against uh, a, another very informed team in, in the Tigers. And, uh, but they've just put uh, just together a great team performance. I mean, you look at the stats, and uh, I mean, Ashley Vordemeyer, she's had a, a fantastic game. 20 points, 9 of 13 from the field. Mm -hmm. Uh, when you, and when she's going up against such a strong front court of McKendrick, Fawcett and, uh, and Robinson, who all had pretty good games, that's great. That's a great game from Ashley. Um, Talia um, Fijo added 13, so she keeps her form rolling on. But Westie's support cast, they just keep popping up, and it was probably the difference in the end. Uh, with points off the bench, Bearcats 26 to the Tigers 7, Sam. So it was probably the difference. I mean, that's huge because they had um, Langenbrick and Suzevic coming off the bench, both 11 points each and about 10, 10 boards between them as well. So that was probably the difference in the end, just the, the overall contribution. Um, you know, the front court from Southern performed pretty good. McKendrick 21 and 10, she's doing her thing. Um, Tara Robinson had a good game. The import battle at the point guard spot, Cunningham versus Campbell, they probably cancelled each other out. That was a re really good duel. Um, similar stat lines, um, nine points, so neither of them were too dominating, so we knew that was going to be a great contest. And, uh, but, um, you know, these two teams may, may, may play each other again, so, um, which is interesting, but Thacker was kept quiet on, off the bench for Southern, which was big for Westies. And a uh, huge win, and they're going to come in this week against Norwood, full of steam, full of confidence. And uh, Southern now uh, with a, a big test, because there's one thing that teams, I mean, you, you fight so hard all year for the double chance, Sam. And, uh, but one th the thing that scares teams the most is going out in straight sets. So uh, Southern will be uh, back against the wall this week, so it'll be interesting to see how they go. Yeah, that's it. Now, 75-63 scoreline in the end was what uh, we saw down at Morford Vale. And a very tough assignment, of course, to always win down there. Uh, the crowds at the T Tigers games are very much loud and proud. So uh, another big uh, weekend coming on down there at uh, Morford Vale this weekend. We'll get to that later. But uh, let's head on over to the elimination final, which will also happen. And uh, this game uh, was going to be uh, one of the great ones because... North and Forestville, for mine, I would have thought were probably way too good to be playing an elimination game, but sadly, out of the top five, two have to go in the first round, and it was out of these two sides. And uh, North had the advantage at home, but uh, the Eagles uh, played some better basketball, and uh, at the end of the day, Olivia Thompson, as she has been pretty much all season long, was vital once again. One of the biggest uh, double-doubles she could put together at 26 points and 15 boards and uh, just doing all the heavy lifting there and a fantastic job once again. Outplaying the Rockets and sadly a team who we thought would probably go very deep into this final series mm. knocked out first round. Yeah, look, that's an upset. I don't think anyone really would have picked Forrestal. We talked about last week how the Eagles girls are going to come in, nothing to lose. 
You know, we, they uh, finish fifth, young team, just going to rock up the hillcrest and have a crack. But uh, I think most people thought um, that North were probably going to have enough, enough depth and enough firepower to get it done. But Olivia Thompson, like you said, mate, 26 points. Now, she was coming up against a very formidable front court in Opal Mater, Joe Hill, who we'll talk about in a little bit, and, um, and Sarah Ellsworthy, who have been fantastic for the Rockets all year. But she has outscored all three of those girls combined. Um, so that was a huge effort, um, not only from Olivia, but the, the support cast from the Forrestal girls um, to come in, and Alex Duncan, um, good defensive effort. And Ruby Luders coming off the bench, 13, 13 boards, Sam, uh, which is about double her season average. So, um, Gill stepped up for the Eagles. Not only that, the rest of their support cast, Amy Brett, Hannah Lehman, and Juliet Gordon, all chipping in and uh, giving them great service where, you know, you look at the North girls, um, Shannon Mackay, she did her best, um, led the way with 15 points, but she, she, you know, six of 21 from the field. So she wouldn't be overly happy with that. Mater and Ellsworthy both quiet, 11 points between them and uh, only 11 points off the bench in total. And for a total of 51 points, Sam, that's not gonna get you any wins. They were 50 points a week before. And I think like you said last week, Sammy, uh, I think they just ran out of a bit of gas. You know, they, they started the season well, and, um, but uh, the last probably six or seven weeks they've struggled and they've struggled to put a, a decent score on the board. And uh, that was, and uh, you know, They've ended up suffering uh, a surprise loss to Hillcrest in an elimination final. You, you were in an elimination final on the week. What's it like going in knowing it's make or break, mate? You know, how are the girls feeling, do you think, coming into this one? Because you just uh, come, come out of a win. Um, well, I mean, it starts in practice. Yeah. You know, you got to uh, understand that this could be your last game in practice. It doesn't just start at the game. Um, you focus on that, you know, when you're training and, and you get that mindset going, you know, because this could be your last training. And so, uh, you know, I feel like the more you push that, the more you, uh, you know, get that intense practice and, and you come into the game, you feel prepared, you feel uh, your mindset is, is, is ready and, uh, you know, you're prepared to, to go out there and give it all you got, you know. Um, and so, yeah, and that's, like we said, North, they'll be disappointed. And, um, but we should touch on Joey, mate. You want to you wanna start with Just, talking yeah, a bit about Yeah, let's that. talk about Joe Hill. Um, Obviously, uh, not so many people would have un would have known this before, but it was going to be her last uh, game at home um, because of uh, Hillcrest Stadium being their only home game there for the elimination one. But uh, depending on the result would also mean whether or not it was her last game. Now, because the Rockets went down, uh, we saw a hero of our uh, state uh, league uh, leave and play a final game on the weekend. Um, I guess for mine... Um, Honour to watch her play the last few years, uh, being involved in the league, reporting and whatnot, um, and to be there on the weekend to see her play in her final game. She put up some good numbers, 12 and 12. Um, she didn't quite get the results she wanted, but she's been an absolute champion, outstanding for the competition, and uh, one that uh, many people, including uh, a lot of the players in that team, have looked up to, and I guess social media as well has just gone absolutely uh, nuts because uh, the overwhelming response and the love for her that has been over quite some time is uh, quite remarkable. Yeah, it, it has been. And look, it's, it's a sad day to see such a champion um, retire. But uh, let's be honest, we've probably got eight or nine years more than we probably thought we were going to get um, watching her. She is such a stalwart. Um, I remember you know, being in my you know, early teens watching her through the 90s and she was unbelievable then. And the, the fact that she's still um, averaging a double-double mm -hmm. at, at 43 is, is unbelievable. And she's been such a great mentor through, throughout, especially the last few years for the rest of the North girls. And uh, just congratulations, Joe. You're an absolute champion and a legend of a person. So from everyone here at Premier League Overtime, we wish you the best and uh, fantastic news as well. She's gonna be an assistant coach for the Lightning this year. So uh, mm -hmm. um, that's a, a great get for them. And I remember she was on our show earlier the year, this year saying that she wasn't sure about the whole coaching gig and wasn't sure if she was up to it, but I think she would be the only person that would think that. Everyone think, would think that Joe would be a fantastic uh, coach and uh, she'll definitely show that this year for the Lightning. So looking forward to seeing her in action there. We really are. It's going to be an exciting uh, summer, of course, when she does uh, get in the Lightning gear and uh, coach that team hopefully to some more success. Um, as we cross from the women's comp to the men's, uh, we had a qualifier on the weekend, uh, Nord taking on Sturt. And this was right down to the wire stuff. Even though, I guess, during the game, uh, the margins were a little bit larger than the final scoreline suggests, 
um, it was quite an interesting game because both teams had a, a decent lead at uh, both stages of the game. Early uh, start for Sturt, they got a jump and had about a 10-point lead, I think, in the first quarter or two. And then after that, uh, Norwood pulled it back and then ended up with a 10-point lead later on in the third quarter. And then in the end, 82-78, the final score. It was a very, very tight finish. Um, but I guess for, for mine, this is the thing I picked out, was that um, I think it was just 13 points off the bench for Norwood, and that was it. And yet they still got across the line. So I thought that was quite impressive. Yeah, we talked about Norwood's lack of depth last week. So if they are going to win and win these finals games, mm -hmm. they're going to rely on their front five and six players, and which is and that happened on the weekend. Uh, Apologise to our viewers. Uh, Daniel Johnson didn't actually play on the weekend. We reported that he was going to, but he was away with the Sixers. So um, obviously that had an effect. Now um, Sturt are a very deep team, and and you don't just Johnson averages 25 points or something a game. You don't just say, oh, okay, Sturt are going to be a 25-point lesser team. Mm -hmm. That's not how it works. Obviously, Jon Warbout steps up. You get Jacob Ragoni coming off the bench with 22 points. And uh, everyone chips in. They're so deep. They go 11 deep. So people step up, which is why they, they kept it close and really pushed the flames. But uh, there were some noticeable um, things on the stat sheet, um, which probably wouldn't happen if Johnson was there. First of all, a 47-30 to 30 rebound count. Um, that is a huge reef. 17 boards up for Norwood. Goes a long way to getting the win. Uh, not only that, um, the front court for Norwood had a day out. Um, Lice at 14 and 11, Holmes 19 and 15, and Daniel Weber there, small forward, 23 points and eight boards. So uh, you throw Johnson in there, then that probably doesn't quite happen that way. So. Um, they would have had to go to other ways to, to get scores. Um, you know, Weber and some other guys at ball probably would have had to try and step up. And so the, the, the dynamics definitely changed with Daniel Johnson not there. Having said that, cracker game. Um, Sturt really brought it and uh, almost got themselves into into the, the next final. But they're going to find themselves against your team coming up. You would have had your eye on this one, uh, Sturt versus Norwood. Um, did you hear anything about the game or? No, I don't, didn't hear too much about it. Just uh, look at the, you know, the stats, and uh, you know, like you said, without without Johnson, man, it's, it's you know, it's tough. But uh, you know, Sturt's a deep team. They only lost by four points without him. So yeah. I mean, they're tough. Yeah, definitely. I was going to just ask as well because before we get into your game on Johnson and the whole topic there, um, you guys lost to them earlier in the year by a little bit. Um, but Johnson, that was when Johnson arrived. Now, I think you guys beat them earlier in the year again without him. What's the difference when he is there? I just think, you know, the team plays with more confidence. Um, you know, when he's on the court, you know, guys just feel, feel that energy, feel that confidence that they can go out there and kind of just be open to play. Um, and he's a big target. He's a big guy, you know. So being that big, you know, what can you really do with him? You can shoot a fadeaway. You can shoot three-pointers. Can go off the dribble a little bit, so it gives guys open options, and you know he, he drives and he kicks. So guys really don't have to worry. You know they don't have to play as hard and give a lot of energy when he's there. Well, it's a, a huge difference, of course, for your team. Like you said, confidence building when he's in your side. Uh, we're going to look at your game though, Nelson, because uh, you guys took on the Forestville Eagles and won 80, uh, 81 to 66. Uh, no Adam Doyle either for an understrength uh, Eagle side in the end. Um, and they went down, of course, to Woodville. 15 points at St. Clair. And uh, Nelson, I guess it was a bit of a one-on-one -on -one scoring game between you and Jake Rios. I think you had about uh, 30 points nearly each. Uh, 29 for yourself, 30 for Jake. Um, one of those sort of games where, uh, I guess, a bit of a shootout, but you guys got the cookies in the end. Yeah. Um, I mean, it came down to uh, getting stops. That's all the game come, came down to. The first half, they really, uh, they really, I mean, their energy was... Was, was way better than ours. Um, we just came out kind of sluggish. Um, and I think that was just them kind of showing us, like, look, we're not going to, you know, go down, even though we don't have Doyle. We're not going to just lay down. So we said, okay, you know, came out uh, second half, and we kind of turned up the heat on defense, and that allowed us to get easy baskets. You know, it wasn't, we didn't have to run many sets. When you're, when you're playing defense, get out and go. Get the rebound, get steals, and you just go. In a game like that, I guess all the extra pressure and you start off sluggish, does that make you feel any worse about it or does it drive you guys to play better? Nah, nah. We knew, you know, we, we, we kind of, we, we, we have a, uh, a certain mindset that we play with and we play with a lot of confidence. You know, we take a lot of pride in our defense. So when you take that pride in defense, you know, you feel good about yourself when your shots aren't going in because you know that you can always step up, get a rebound, and get out and go. If you're not, you know, maybe knocking down a three or, you know, missing layups, you can still stop the other team from scoring. 
Dougie, I'm sure you had a close eye on this game since we were the Eagles, your, uh, your men. Yeah, this was a bit disappointing. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, look, uh, when I saw Doyle wasn't going to play, I, I knew it was going to be a, a tough road for the Eagles boys. Um, and it was, but you know, 17-9 first quarter, so they came out and had a crack, no doubt about that. Um, so, but they would have known, obviously, Doyle wasn't going to play, so that, which makes the loss against Sturt the week before, you know, even, even bigger because they would have finished third and, and had a double chance and got Doyle back in. So, um, but that's done and done. Um, you know, big uh, Stan, Luke Sandbridge, 14 points, 6 of 7, so he was very efficient. Adam Miller had a good game as well for you, by 14 points, 6 of 9, so you had, you know, a couple of, a couple of veterans there um, stepping up when, when you needed them to. But yourself, you had 20 rebounds. The Eagles had 25 rebounds, so you almost out-rebounded the whole team, mate, um, which was obviously a huge factor. And when you said in the second half you were hitting the boards hard and get, getting the running game going, that was obviously uh, a huge factor in, in the win. Um, coming up against Sturt this week, you have to try and do a certain thing, do that as well. They're probably a little bit bigger. Mm -hmm. Okay, so you probably really need guys like Miller and um, Big Stan to step up on the boards as well to help mm -hmm. you out there. Um, so that's going to be good. Folds had a, had a good game, 16 points. And, and like we said, Rios, uh, who will be pushing for a, a, an All-Star 5 selection this year, I would have thought, but he might just miss out. But he's had a great year. He's finished with 30 and he's clearly kept a minute. Um, he's you know, scored almost half their points, Sam. So, you know, really good, really good season for, for Jake this year. And um, But uh, the Eagles, they'll be disappointed. They uh, missed out on the finals last year, Sam. And they would have been thinking, even though they finished fifth, that they could go deep in this finals, possibly get to a grand final and surprise a few people. So they'll be disappointed that they uh, would have brushed them aside um, in the first week. But uh, that's hoops, isn't it? That's it. Well, of course, uh, one man in that Woodville team, of course, Nelson himself, who's with us today, is going to quickly chat to us about uh, the season to start with, I guess, because you have had a cracker and it's led you guys towards the final series very nicely and now, of course, into a semi. Dougie, let's just quickly look at some of this man's stats because he has been phenomenal this year. Right, yeah. Average of 22 points per game, nine and a half rebounds, I think it is, per game, three and a half assists a game, and shooting at 51%. That's not too bad by my standards at all. 51%, that's, that's 51%. pretty good. 51%. Where do you where do you where do you get most of your shots? Where are you getting them from? Oh, I'm in the lane. Yep. In the paint. Yep. Yeah. Get in the lane. I Top mean, to guard. A Woolacott is probably on the cards. I don't know if you've thought about this at all, but do you know what the Woolacott medal is? Yeah, I do. Good, good man. Has it been a goal? Uh, of course, of course. <laughs> <laughs> so you know? he's learned about it since day one. Yeah. So I mean, do what has been the main factor, I guess, for you in terms of all your success this year? Because you've played extraordinarily well. Mm. There's so much success that we see on the court. Mm. I'm sure there's plenty of stuff offered as well. What leads you to that success? I think, uh, man, Woodville, man, Woodville is a club that, uh, man, they have so much pride, man. I love Woodville. Um, you know, guys play with heart. Guys play hard. So it makes it easy for a guy like me to come in, uh, who kind of dictate. Uh, well, base my game off of playing hard and effort um, to come in and, and to help the team. Uh, I don't have to do too much, just play hard and compete, and other guys are right there. Um, and, and just the offense that uh, Darnell runs, man, it's just, it's just free-flowing, it's open. It's not, you know, too many uh, down screens or robotic movements, you know. It's just like, hey, make basketball plays. Uh, play hard on defense, rebound the ball, and the game will take care of itself. And, you know, that's what, you know, 22 points, not rebounds, just all effort. You know, it's not really too much of me coming off screens and people setting me up. It's just effort, you know. You spoke about Darnell Me just then, your coach. Yeah. Um, very much a lot of experience in his, in his head. He's got a lot going on. He knows what, he can read a game very, very well. How mm -hmm. much have you taken from him, I guess? He's been, I'm sure, quite an influence. Yeah, big time, man. I take... Um, Man, every practice, you know, he te I, I, I learned something new from him. Um, and just his, his mindset is, is, um, is, is so open to the game. It's not a, it's not a closed, closed mindset. It's like, you know, this is basketball. Basketball should be like water. It's no form. It's no, you know, it's just flowing. And you got to let it flow. And, you know, but you got you to gotta put emphasis on rebounding the defense, you know, because that's what wins games and championships. And the rest take care. The rest will take care of itself. And you know, all year, he, you know, he pushes that. And look, you know, we're, we're doing we're, we're doing what we're supposed to do. 
not the only coach that I guess has been uh, quite an influence in your life. Mm. Joey Wright, of course, uh, Adelaide 36's coach, um, doing a very nice job indeed. He, he was a big part of getting you here to Adelaide because, of course, from the US yourself, um, playing some college ball, in fact, for the Kangaroos. How funny is that? Right. Um, so, <laughs> I mean, can you run us through, I guess, your involvement with him and um, you know how you've enjoyed your experience so far through Joey getting you here? Yeah, man, Joey, definitely a a, a big part of getting me here, man, just a just a phone call, um, asking to help me, you know, in a time where you know I was kind of desperate for help. Hey, man, okay, I, you know I can help you out, just like that. We go back to 2014 where he drafted me to the uh, Worldwide Invitational, and uh, you know we just basically built a relationship from that. And uh, for him to help me out, put my name out there, and for me to get here, man, I, I'm so. Uh, I almost feel in, indebted to him, you know, uh, but he takes it as just like, you know, I'm just helping another another player. So it's it's nothing for him, you know, but it means everything to me, you know. And the experience so far in Australia, is it different? Is it different? <laughs> <laughs> oh, man, it's, uh, you know, Australia is a wonderful place, man. It's, um, you know, I, it's, it's so much I can say about it, but, um, man, it's, it's beautiful. It's, it's a great place. The people are good. The um, the culture is good. I mean, you know, why would you want to leave? You know, so. And that's through one of our that's through one of our worst winters that we've had, Sam. So yeah. stick around for a few months, mate. It gets better, I promise. <laughs> <laughs> just just one more before I hand it over to Dougie. Uh, well, you've previously said on record as well that you're keen to play in the NBL and mm. stick around here. Like you said, you don't want to leave. Mm. Um, why would you? You've got an NBL possibility mm. uh, ahead of you. How keen are you to drive yourself towards that? Oh, man, working hard as much as I can, you know, put in the work and, and you know, um, it's just all, that's all it's going to come down to is put in the work um, and I know one day I'm going to get a chance, you know, that's all you need is one chance. And uh, me putting that work, preparing all that time and when it happens, you know, I'll be ready. Um, but definitely, you know, I would definitely want to play at the highest level possible um, in this beautiful country and, uh, you know, that's, that's a goal. Doug, I can already see him in sixes colours already. <laughs> yeah, well, if you bring 22 points to nine, mm. nine boards, that'd be great. <laughs> we'll have you. Um, let me, Darren Ng, now, I don't know if you're going to give us some inside information, mate, but oh. how's his injury coming along and are we going to see him again in, this year? Yeah, he'll be back next game. No, <laughs> 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 nah, man, he's, uh, he's, you know, he's taking it easy. Um, uh, definitely, uh, there's definitely a chance that uh, he will be back, um, you know, but... Uh, what happened, and you know, uh, he got hurt, and um, obviously he couldn't play, um, you know, our last few games. And uh, but he's, he's he's rehabbing, he's getting better. Um, you know, everybody knows he's a big part of our team. Yep. We would love to have him back, yeah. um, but he's still a leader out there. You know, even when he's there, when his presence or um, when he's present, you know, we we play that much harder. You know. So he's a big part of our team. Tell us about, um, with him been out for a few weeks now, who are some of the guys that have really stepped up to help oh, you, you know, have a chance in the finals? Yeah, man, we got a guy named Leon Twig. Yep. Um, and, he's, and he'll be going to college, and uh, this will be his last game coming up. He leaves August 30th, okay. and he's going to start his ju uh, junior college, uh, college career. Great shooter, great shooter, man. And uh, I mean, he kind of filled that role. He definitely stepped up big time. Uh, had nine points uh, in the Forceville game. Um, Danny McKee, yep. um, definitely. He's, I mean, he's running. He's running things. He's the point guard of the team. Um, he, he steps up well, you know. And and every everybody's stepping up. Everybody stepped up just just that much, you know. To where, okay, are they still? Do they still have Darren? You know. So, you know, every everyone's making a leap up, and and you know, we just got to keep pushing and keep keep fighting. That's good because uh, we talked about your big three or year yourself, Darren and and Big League Stanbridge, but you have had guys definitely step up in his absence, and it's really, for me, has made this Sturt game coming up a, a real line ball. Um, should we start talking about that game, Sam? Or We, we can. We got, um, I want to know, because I want to know, Daniel Johnson, everyone, we expect him to play this week. Who's going to get the job on him? Oh, man. Well, well we're, we're probably, we'll probably uh, throw a couple things at him. You know, we got some big guys as well. Um, you know, we, everybody know we have Luke Stanbridge. We have Adam Miller, um, one of our captains, definitely a you know, a leader on our team. Yeah. We have a guy named Cody. Um, may not heard about him too much, but you know, he's a he's a big boy. Um, so you know, we'll throw a, a couple of different things. You know, we'll see what works. Um, at the end of the day, it's not about Daniel Johnson. It's about Sturt. And if yeah, we can, right. if Daniel Johnson scores forty points, 
and you know we lose, we'll live with that. Daniel Johnson scores 20 points, we win. Well, that's what it is. You know, as long as we can beat those other guys, as long as we can beat Sturt, we don't care who scores. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Last time you played him, uh, who lined up on you? Do you remember? Who? Oh man, it was TK. Okay. The guy had unbelievable energy. Yeah, and he's I'm, a good athlete. Uh, you know, I want to tell him just to relax, man. But <laughs> unbelievable energy. Um, and he was just, you know, tracking me down the whole game. Uh, you know, we'll see if he guards me this time. Um, but, yeah, good good defender, good energy. Mm. Um, yeah, it's going to be it's going to be a, a cracker game. Another do or die for yourself. But, like we said for Sturt, no one likes to be, uh, you know, no one wants to go out in straight sets, Sam. Um, so they'll have nervous going into it. You guys will be going in, nothing to lose, um, being underdogs. But, obviously, with that inner belief, um, I'm, I'm sure your inner belief would be suggesting that uh, you'd be favourites because you don't go into any final thinking you're, you're underdogs. Mm. Um, how's, the, how's the feeling around the group after the winning for and leading into the game, mate? Oh, man, we, we live to, you know, to play another game. Yep. And that's how it is when it comes to finals. You live to play another game. And uh, you know, we're, we're preparing right now for this third team. We're preparing ourselves. We're getting ourselves ready. And, man, I, it's going to be a good game. It's going to be a colossal game, Doug. I don't know. I can't honestly split them. Um, I mean, Johnson would be uh, the difference, I guess, in the end. Uh, the loser, obviously, out. They're knocked out. This is a knockout game. Um, and the winner will play the uh, the loser of the Southern Tigers and the Norwood Flames. Uh, if you were to win, you would match up against one of those two. How confident would you be if you were to match up against either of those teams? Yeah, we've, we've beat Norwood, um, and we lost to uh, Southern by one point. Um, so we're pretty confident uh, going into uh, both those games if we if we win, um, definitely. Um, those are two good two good teams. We'll s I want to see actually. I would love to see that game, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, which we played shame. on Sunday or something. It's a shame you're playing <laughs> it's at the same time. Uh, so it, I mean, it, obviously, you, if you would lose, you're knocked out though. So mm. there's a lot of riding on the on the well. There's a lot of uh, yeah, a lot on the line right now mm. for you guys. So um, very much uh, an exciting time. Do you think you can make the granny? Yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. I mean, man, we we got we got the will, man. We got you know we got the will to to keep going. You know we don't want to you know we don't want to put too much on it, and we're not going to take too much away from it. But it's another game, and it comes down to it, it's another game, and you got to put the ball in the hole. You got to stop the other team from doing it. You know. And so. It's going to be a cracker, Sam. I'm really looking forward to a couple of good matchups as well. In the backcourt, Josiah Lee up against um, McGee, like you said, mm -hmm. that's going to be a good one. Um, Isaac White's in really good form, so it uh, mm, yeah, be interesting yeah. to see who takes him, possibly yourself. Um, with a little bit, you probably got a little bit, a few inches on him, so I don't know if you're going to get the gig on him, but I would suggest that would be a pretty good idea. And then the, the front court battle, Johnson and Warbow up against, yeah, Stanbridge and, and Miller. Um, and a couple others is going to be good as well. So, great game. Should we, oh, I don't know, pick a winner. <laughs> You're sitting right next to me, mate, and to be honest, Make I'm, the not, right decision, I'm, not a, I'm not a huge Sturt fan, so we'll go with, <laughs> we'll go with Woodville. All right. We'll go with Woodville, Sammy, how about yourself? I can't split one. I'm not going to. I'm the biased <laughs> here on the desk. I'm the only one who is. Uh, let's, so, uh, of course, uh, that is a very big game, Pasadena Stadium. Sturt, Sturt, rubbing in the dirt. <laughs> yeah, 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 here you go. <laughs> Check it out, of course, at Pasadena on Saturday night. The other semi-final, the second one, and the one that still has double chance on offer is the Southern Tigers and Nord Flames. Top two teams. This is going to be a belter. Um, mm. This is at Morfitt Vale. Austral Sports will cover this, and it's hard to pick them because the Nord Flames are the only team to beat the Tigers this year, and the Tigers are 20-1. Uh, they hit him with a week off, and they're back in action, and it's going to be uh, quite exciting. You indicated last week that you, uh, you think Nord and Sturt will meet again in a prelim now. It completely goes against your tip against Woodville, and it just means that you think Southern mm. will win. So let's let's just discuss this. Okay. Well, uh, yes. Well, um, I think Southern will win, absolutely. Mm -hmm. um, and I've well because it's just the speech you just gave me just you just changed my mind. There you go. <laughs> yeah. So um, yeah, I think Woodville will win. And um, so, but let's just talk about this game. Cool. Some great matchups, mate. Uh, you know, Johns versus Weber. I mean, that's going to be a cracker. You know, the young guy coming against the veteran, uh, the finals, you know, um, superstar over the years. That's going to be key. Um, but then you go to the front court, and I'm not quite sure how they're going to do it because if Dodman lines up against Holmes, which might happen, then, and then Starling comes up against Lysett, then you've still got Creek to worry about. Now, do you put Daniel Weber on him? Mm. Um, so that'll be a dangerous matchup. But then 
because I think actually Matthew Lysa is probably the better matchup for Creek. Yeah. But if you do that, then you've got to probably throw Holmes on Starling, and then you've still got Dobman to worry about. Yeah. So uh, that, that's a handful. I'm not sure, exactly sure how Norway are going to play it. They'll, I reckon they'll show some zone at some point, um, just to mm-hmm. you know make him hit the outside shots, clog it up, get the you know because then Holmes and Lysa can can take care of the boards mm. and. And uh, Daniel Weber, who's who's good on the boards as well, um, so they might just make him beat them from the perimeter. But um, I think they showed some zone last time. They played it more for Val, and uh, it didn't work. So we'll see what happens there. That's going to be interesting. Um, what's your feel on this game, Nelson? Nah, honestly, I uh, I like Norwood. I like Norwood, man. Those guys play together. They play hard. I feel like they're the they're the only team in this league that you really can't find the obvious weakness, you know what I'm saying? You yeah. just can't find the obvious weakness. And like you said, they play that zone and they make them shoot from the outside, they're going to have a chance. I think uh, there is an obvious weakness, and I reckon it's their bench. So I reckon, I reckon they struggle to get a score. I mean, if one of their, if, if Daniel, so if Daniel Weber doesn't rock, doesn't rock up and play well, they, don't, you know, they haven't got a lot coming in. They've got O'Boyle, who's had a pretty great year off the bench and would be up there for a six-man award if there was one. But... Um, other than that, it sort of drops away a bit. Benny Howes is start, a starting guard, and uh, so he'll have a, a big job. He might even get the job on Johns, actually, but he'll probably start on Todd Davies. Um, I think Southern just have a little bit extra on the bench mm. um, to throw at them. But, uh, yeah, so I think Flames, you know, I think Southern will get them. I think, um, you know, the Southern will get their running game going, and uh, they, they'll be fresh after a week off. So uh, Southern will get them, but it's going to be it's going to be a cracker. So you and Nelson, you team t- seem to like Norwood's bench. Uh, you know, you made a great point. That is an obvious weakness for them. 13 points uh, off the bench uh, out of 82. I mean, that's, that's, not a, that's not a lot, you know. You're, you're really depending on those five guys right there. And like you said, Southern got a few more guys to pull off that bench and just keep going. So it's going to be interesting how it, uh, how it all plays out. It's going to be a cracker game. Uh, so that's at Morford Vale. Uh, Austral Sports will see that one. And you'll also see this one, the women's semi final, as we look at the women's comp now. This is the uh, number one semi, so there is a knockout element to it, and uh, this is going to be huge because the Southern Tigers, of course, they're playing against the Eagles, and the Tigers, who just lost their last game, they finished second, uh, they did very well um, to get there, but you don't want to see them go two and out in the finals. I'm sure they certainly won't be looking to do that, but the Eagles, who came fifth, are up against the team that came second. Form side would suggest uh, the Eagles, however, the Tigers with home court are uh, probably more advantaged in that sense. But it's going to be a big game. Yeah, look, I, I feel a bit silly because I've, I've tipped against the Eagles in the last couple of weeks and they, they keep winning and they're, they're my team. So I only go for them this week. So they, they forced me into it. But it's going to be great. Uh, we had Olivia Thompson up against the, the trio of, of front court for the North last week and she's, she's trumped them. The, the front court here gets even better with yeah. Robinson, Forster, and McKendrick. I mean, Molly McKendrick's and Cunningham and, uh, and and Cunningham as well. So I mean, that's that's big. So once again, the Eagles girls, they, their support cast needs to come in. And I keep saying it, but finals basketball with and we've said it before. Morgan Yeager's gone. So but these girls have been stepping up. Sam, you know, Amy Brett, Gordon, mm-hmm. Alex Duncan, Hannah Lehman, um, and Luda's off the bench. You know, they got it done last week. This is even a bigger task now, and to do it on the road two weeks in a row. Mm-hmm. Um, but you never know. And once again, you look at depth-wise, the Eagles' depth, I think, is a little bit better than the Tigers. You know, they have, you know, the Tigers have Thacker off the bench, um, and they also have Kelsey Rutland, but her, her stats have gone away. Uh, she's fallen off in the second half of the year. Actually, it basically happened when Thacker came in. So um, the Tigers will be relying on their, on their front five. Um, you know, Eagles need to find need to find an answer for Cunningham. Um, you know, she's in great form. She had a great battle last week. So that would be interesting to see which way the Eagles go there. But Tigers need to find someone to guard Olivia Thompson. Yeah. And also Di Francesco had a, a bit of a poor shooting night on the unforgiving, unforgiving rings of Hillcrest. I don't think she'll have a poor shooting night two weeks in a row. So it's going to be a cracker. You're good friends with um, Tyrea Cunningham. Yeah, so correct. Yeah, yeah. She's a great year, mate. How have you seen her year? Yeah, I got to, I get a chance uh, when we played Southern. I got the chance to go down there and watch her. Um, she's a you know workout with her here at the dome. Um, great player, um, and like you said, it's going to be interesting, man. I haven't you know I don't get to watch all the girls' games, uh, but I know these are two good coaches. Absolutely. And uh, we're going to see how that plays out as well. 
Yeah. Oh, just a huge game, you know, I think. I, I really cannot wait for Saturday night to see that and the men's game as well. There's just going to be one uh, massive line-up at Morphett Vale. So uh, go down and see those uh, head-to-heads, uh, of course. The other one is uh, the two teams that will be playing off for a prelim and grand final positions, mm. um, the Norwood Flames and West Adelaide Bearcats. Now, the West uh, in some top form. They are probably the peak right now. They're probably the form side in the entire comp. The last time they took on Norwood, they got the better of them and won by two points. I think that was at Mars as well. Um, and Norwood are 3-2 and two in their last five games, including a loss to West and Southern. So uh, West haven't dropped a game in a while and uh, looking in great form. And with a ticket up for, the, up for grabs to the GF, I don't see why they shouldn't uh, be trying to take that. Oh, they'll be trying to take it, Sam, absolutely. This, was, this one's too close to call for mine. Um, I mean, the matchups uh, we've got... You know, Campbell for West, he's up against Jess Marnie, who's, that's going to be great. That's going to be awesome. Um, I'm not sure who's going to get the job on Jess Good. You know, she's probably an All-Star 5 member this year, or very close to. Um, Ashley Vordemeyer was probably a front runner there, or maybe Talia Fijo. Um, might go head to head. Actually, Fijo had 28 points last time these two teams met. So Norway are going to have their hands full with her. I'm thinking maybe Cara and Etz might get the job on, on Talia. Not sure that's going to be interesting. Um, Marissa Stabile up against Trudy Holland, another great matchup. And off the bench, you've got um, two really good rebounders in uh, Chelsea Brook and uh, Stana Sezevic going up against each other. So that is going to be, um, a, a, they will go a fair way actually to determine this. The benches, like I said, Sam, and I keep saying it, benches are huge in finals. And I think West get the, have a little bit of the edge there. You've got the young Fijo as well. You've got Sky Langenbrink coming on in good form. Stana Sezevic, like I said before. So they're just a little bit deeper than Norwood. But Norwood's front six with Jess Good, Annette, Stabile, Brooke, and uh, throw in the, the, the Macca skill as well. Mm. Um, the guard who, who's had a pretty good year. And uh, I mean, I, I, mean oh, I don't know. I don't know who's going to win this one. I'm going to go Westies because they're, mm. they're just on a roll. But, uh, and they got them not long ago. But um, this Norwood team is, 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 uh, is a very good team. They only, you don't lose three games for a reason. And uh, they've all played plenty of finals, they've all won premierships, so um, obviously that would go in um, probably favourites, but I'm going to tip Westies. I like it. Well, there's something a bit different. Uh, uh, that, that's all the finals you got for the weekend. There's four there that are absolute crackers. Two at Morphet Vale, one at Mars, one at Pasadena. Make your, uh, make your choice. You've got to make one. Where are you heading? Well, I'll, <laughs> can you go to four places oh, at once? Oh yeah, look, I'll, I'll go to the Woodville game. I reckon. One, I, I think uh, Stair versus um, Woodville. That's going to be uh, that's going to be great. Really good matchups. Um, I think it's going to be an entertaining game. There's going to be a lot of fast break basketball. Um, you know, Isaac White likes to get out and mm. run and, and just with yourself as well. Um, that's going to be a cracker. So uh, I would head to Pasadena and watch that one, Sammy. Well, make sure you say hi to Doug if you do see him there. And uh, Nelson, of course, will be there as well playing. And uh, I'm sure you're looking forward to that. Yeah, definitely. definitely. Big weekend. Big weekend, of Good course, luck, of finals action. Thank you for coming on, mate. Well, Great to have you. you. Cheers, Cheers, mate. Thank you for coming along. Good work. And of course, Dougie, always nice to have you. Yeah, it's great to be here. Great to be right in the middle of the finals basketball, Sam. And uh, everyone get out to a game, support the league, and uh, we'll see you next week to talk about all the results. Certainly will. Prelims are coming up uh, the week after, so uh, we can't wait to get stuck in all of that. We're getting nearer and nearer to the granny. Keep t Stay tuned, of course, here to Premier League Overtime for all the news and analysis. We look forward to your company then.